crafters. Welcome to my Valentine's Day gift ideas to be DIYing with your Cricut this year. I am personally using my Cricut Explore Air 2 for today's video. If you don't have a Cricut machine, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm hoping these ideas can still spark some creativity in you and you can get DIYing with some crafts for Valentine's Day. Otherwise, any Cricut machine will do. So I'm just going to briefly go over what we're doing today. I am sharing four different projects with you today, and I do try to give a variety of options when it comes to projects. So we're doing a little bit of heat transfer vinyl with a heat press as well. I'm going to be sharing some permanent vinyl decals that we're going to be putting on a really cute positivity jar or date jar. We're also making a really sweet little mug to be gifting, and we can put little treats in there. We'll see how it goes. And then the last one is a little bit of a Cricut Design Space hack, and that is when it comes to those little Valentine's Day coloring cards that people are making and selling for Valentine's Day. And you can purchase those on Cricut Design Space for the template. But I found a way to very easily make it for free, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So not only is it cute and budget friendly, but definitely a must for this year for Valentine's Day. It was a hit with my daughter already. So we are going to jump right into these ideas. Let's go. The first project we are starting with are the little Valentine's Day coloring cards. So first I typed into Google butterfly coloring page and I'm just going to find one that I like. Once I find one, I'm going to save it to my computer and then we're able to jump on over to Cricut Design Space. Perfect. So now that I'm in Cricut Design Space, the first thing I want to do is upload that image to here. So we're going to go on the left hand side under the button that says upload and just press on that. Then we're going to press upload image and then browse. Now make sure you press on that picture that we just downloaded. It should be your most recent download in the download folder on your computer. Perfect. So now that that is there, we, we do have a couple options, but for today's video, we're going to press on simple right here. And then we're going to press continue at the bottom in green. And now what we need to do is just select all of the things between the lines. So we're making it essentially a clear background and we just want the lines there. It's okay if you accidentally mess up and press the line. You can actually hit the undo arrow right here. So that is a really helpful little tip because sometimes you do kind of nick the line and then it disappears. Before you go and continue, make sure you hit preview cut image just to ensure that all of those parts are gone and it is just in fact the lines. And then you can continue. Now select cut image, that's good, and upload. So now we're going to just press on that image and then hit add to canvas. Okay, wonderful. So now that's added, but there's still a problem. We want this to be with the draw function on our pen with our Cricut. And on here it says basic cut. So how we change that is we go here to the drop down bar at the top where it says basic cut and we are able to change it under draw. It says pen. So select pen and now you see the lines changed a little bit. And it just is telling the Cricut that we're wanting to draw that part instead of cut it out. And now I know it was successfully done because on the right hand panel, it's saying that it is pen. So we will see as the project goes, we may have to go in and change a couple more things here and there like that. So the next thing I want to do is set up my template for my card and my card stock. So my Cricut knows where to cut out the actual card. So I'm just getting a square and changing it to a rectangle. I'm a very visual crafter, so I decided to change the color of the cardstock in the back. And now I'm just adding the text that I wanted to add to my Valentine's Day card. So I'm writing, you make my heart flutter. I know, cheesy. And then I'm going to choose a font that I like. Now with the font, you will find the same thing, that it automatically sets it to basic cut on that right hand panel. You can see that there. And we want this part to draw out as well because I don't want my machine to start cutting out the letters on my card. So I just go to that same drop down menu at the top of the screen under the word basic cut and I'm just going to select pen again. So anytime I want to change it to the draw function on my Cricut machine instead of cut, that's what I'm going to do. 
and then maybe I accidentally do that and I want to change it back to cut, you just hit that same drop down and instead you're going to select basic cut. So that's kind of the way to work between there. A great little tip is when you are making something like the card where my machine needs to know what places to draw, what places to cut, and I don't want it too close, using this align button up here is really helpful. One, to get everything just very straight and flush because you don't want, well maybe you do, but for me I don't want a card that's kind of lopsided. It'll look a little funky and that's not the look I'm quite going for. So hitting that align button is very helpful. You can hit align horizontally, vertically, to the left and right, and you'll see me use it throughout this tutorial, which I find it really handy for things like this. So I'm just adding all of the wording and making sure that it's all set to pen so that it draws. And then I had to go in and think of a way to be able to fit a pen, pencil, or maybe some type of candy maybe a lollipop, we'll see what happens, into the card. So my idea with it is that I'm able to kind of pop open part of it and slide a crayon or a lollipop through there. So what I came up with was taking this kind of equals sign in the shapes on the left hand side here. So you're going to press shapes and then I selected the equal sign and I shrunk it down a little bit. I did try to make the line so the gray part is what's actually going to cut out and then the clear part in the middle is going to be the card stock that's just there. So I'm going to duplicate it and just do one on each side. I do go in and align them to make sure they're both straight and just align them by the bottom there that way they are equal and those I'm going to leave as a basic cut because I do want those to be cut out. Perfect. So that is done. They are centered and aligned. So that's perfect. That's the way I wanted it. The last step with this card before we're ready to actually make it is the most important step. And that is making sure that you attach this together. So what the attach button will do in this situation is tell the Cricut machine exactly where to draw it and then afterwards where to cut it. If you do not hit attach, it might cut it out across the middle of your card, across a random part of the page, nowhere near the drawing. It doesn't understand where you want it to cut out. And I want it to cut out around this little pink uh, rectangle here to make the card. So when you hit attach, make sure to highlight the whole thing here. So I'm going to highlight it all. And then I'm going to hit the attach button. And the colors are going to change a little bit, that's okay, it's just telling me that it's all attached as one. And as you can see on the right hand side, we still have it broken down into basic cut and pen. And my Cricut will recognize which one is which, so we don't need to worry about that. I will show you how it does recognize it. So now we're ready to hit make it on the top right hand side. And if I am going too fast over any of this, feel free to pause at any point and go back if you need to. When I watch tutorials, I like to do it along with the person, so I will pause, do the step they just said, and then press play, watch the next step, and then do that step myself. So that's how I like to do it, but I know people learn in a lot of different ways, so whether you're just sitting back and learning that way or if you're actually doing it with me feel free to pause rewind fast forward i will leave chapters down below so you do know where to kind of go if you need to skip ahead or go back and feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you need me to explain something in more details and clarify or, or go a little slower or faster i never know sometimes i get told to go a little bit slower so i've been trying to do that lately and really just go step by step but i also don't want to take too long that it's boring. So I, I try my best, but let me know down below. Okay, so we're ready to make it. And I really want to show you this part because the Cricut knows what to do at this point. So we are going to first load the cardstock. So what we need to do is take our mat and I'm just applying the cardstock to it. I have a 12 by 12, just regular cardstock with this make sure to change your settings. So I'm changing it to light cardstock. You can also do it manually on Cricut Design Space under materials and then select cardstock. 
I think that's probably the fan favorite way to do it, but I honestly just prefer to use the little toggle on my Cricut machine. Not all Cricuts have that option, which is why I'm saying you might want to manually do it. So this is how you use the pen. You're going to open up the one that says port A. It just unclips open. You're going to slide in the pen and then close that clamp back up. Now I am ready to load my Cricut, so I wait until the arrow is there, and I'm going to press it, and then it will start flashing with the C, so you're going to press it, and that's going to tell the Cricut I'm ready to go. Okay, so right now you can see that my Cricut design space here says drawing, and I wanted to show you that part because it will automatically cut after. I don't have to press anything else, and I will show you that. So now it's just doing its little thing, and I obviously sped it up because I didn't want you to have to sit there and watch it draw for as long as it did. The drawing can take a little bit sometimes, especially if you're doing a very intricate design. And as you saw, it automatically just switched from drawing, and then it went right to cutting. So it's really cool how it does that, and it knows what to do because we hit that attach button, which is why it's so important. Otherwise, it might have just cut across my entire page, maybe cut my drawing in half. So that attach button is so important. I have forgotten it before and then it ruined the projects that I made. So definitely if you remember anything from that tutorial, hit the attach button at the end before you go in and cut. Okay, I totally forgot to hit record on my camera when I unloaded the mat and then peeled the cardstock off, but all I did was just popped out this part of the cardstock because it had already been cut by my Cricut machine. And I'm just kind of showing you what I did because I realized I wasn't filming. And I'm just going in and weeding out, which means removing the parts we don't want, which are those little equal sign lines where we're going to slide the crayon and the lollipop into. So we're going to kind of scrape that out of there. Pop those out, perfect. So that's what the card's going to look like. This is so simple, honestly. It seemed really intimidating to me at first, and I just did a little trial run in this tutorial and it ended up working well. So I have a little lollipop here, and then I'm just going to slide in, and my little idea worked really great. Like, look how wonderful that fits in there. So you could definitely put a little treat in there, like a lollipop, if you're gifting it to a classroom, for example. But I think the fan favorite with these type of things is a crayon or a couple of crayons. And then the children or whoever you gift it to can actually color in that picture at the top, which was why I looked up the whole coloring page thing. And then it makes it like a fun little card that they can actually color in themselves. I feel like it's such a great little budget-friendly hack because you can buy these on Cricut Design Space. I believe they're just under $6, but it was so easy for me to do myself. If I look back at the footage, it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to do, which sure, maybe you don't have that time to, you know, just take and make it. So maybe spending that money is worth it to you. But for me, it was so easy to make this. And I highly recommend you make it yourself. Now we are ready to hop on over to project number two. And for this project, the inspiration is kind of like a date night jar or positivity jar. Something that is going to be a little bit of a multifunctional piece. So it's a gift. I want it to be kind of like a decor piece for the house. And then I also want it to be something that just brings a lot of positivity and happiness with what I put inside of it. So there are a couple of really cool options you could do with this, which I will mention at the very end. But for the purposes of this video, I'm taking a pickle jar, gherkins, whatever you call it, depending where you live in the world. First, you're going to want to clean it out really good, get rid of that smell. So I had a dish soap and gave it a good scrub. If you have a dishwasher, try putting it in there. You want to remove the labels as well. You don't have to use a pickle jar. You can use, you know, you can buy a jar or just use like, tomato sauce jar or whatever you have on hand. I like to do projects that are as budget friendly and zero cost as possible. So I did just want to use the jar I had. So we're going to remove the label and how I like to do that is soak it in a little bit of warm water first and then I'm able to go in and start scrubbing it off just with my hands and my nails and then I can go in with some dish soap rub it on there to get any of that sticky residue off. So that's how I like to do it. There's a bunch of ways to remove the labels though. And then I let it fully dry and this is what it looked like the following day. 
So I'm going to go in and paint the lid because, you know, the yellow bright lid isn't quite the vibe I'm looking for with the best before date on it. So I'm going in with some black acrylic paint that I picked up at the dollar shop and just a little sponge brush. And instead of painting it by just wiping it on, I'm going to dab it on as much as I can with the sponge. That way I get more coverage and I don't have to do as many layers. So I really wanted it to be a, a thick, full covered. So I did try to just paint it and it just wasn't working. So the dabbing, highly recommended, especially on a jar. So I went in and ended up doing two coats on that for the night. I did let it dry a little bit and then went back in about 30 minutes later and did the second coat. So th this part I did at nighttime. That way the next morning when I woke up, here we go, this is the next morning, I had it and it looked really nice. It actually looked kind of like chalk paint, that very matte look. I was a big fan of how it came out. So this is what I have now and we're ready to start designing our decal. So next we're going to hop on over to Cricut Design Space and start designing. Perfect. So I'm just wanting to put a cute little saying on here. So I'm going to hit the text function on the left hand side and I think I'm going to type out jar full of love or something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we're going to do that, but I want to do two different styles and fonts. I want the love to be in a different color as well. So it really stands out and I'm going to fiddle around with the fonts a little bit here until I get the one that I really like. Perfect. So I've played around with that a little bit and I like the way that's looking. And again, I, I am a very visual crafter, so I like to change the color to be the color of the vinyl that I'm going to be cutting it on. And then this way my Cricut machine knows to cut it out on two different cuts. That way it understands that I'm using at least two different kinds or colors of vinyl. Perfect. So I'm sizing it out now and then I can go in and hit make it. Was that not the easiest decal? I've ever done on a tutorial? Probably. Okay, so now we're going to hit continue. Make sure to set your materials, whether it's on your actual Cricut machine or on Cricut Design Space under the materials. So I have added my vinyl to my Cricut mat and I am loading my mat into my machine. I like to use a lot of scrap vinyl, so if you're wondering why my vinyl doesn't look perfect 12 by 12, that's why I just use scraps and then essentially my projects are kind of in a way free or if not very, very cheap because it's just vinyl that would be thrown out anyways. Not specifically these large pieces of vinyl, but sometimes I'm pretty sure actually later in this tutorial you will see me using very tiny scraps of vinyl to cut out on my machine and that's just because I don't like wasting it and I like being budget friendly. So when you're pulling vinyl off the mat, it's really the my favorite way, I guess, to flip it over and then you pull the mat away from it. So you kind of bend the mat a little bit and pull it away. And that way your decal doesn't bend and kind of crease. Okay, letting it cut out and do its thing. And then again, flipping it over and removing the mat from the decal. So like I just mentioned, I love using scraps. So I cut out really close to the decal with my scissors. And then the remainder I put in my little scrap box to use for another project. So now we're going to go in and weave this vinyl. This is permanent vinyl, so we don't need to worry about sealing it, but you can use things like Mod Podge later on or some type of sealant if you really just want to make sure it's going to be on there good. But I am using permanent vinyl and I don't need to worry about that today. So I'm going to start weeding it. And really what that means is, I've, I've kind of mentioned a couple times, but if you don't know what weeding is, it's just really removing the parts that you're not wanting on your decal. So any middle parts of the letters, and then we're removing just any parts that we're not needing and leaving just the letters. Perfect. So that is done. Okay. Now something I feel like I don't see done very often that is a really helpful tip is when I'm working with permanent vinyl and I'm going to be going in with some transfer tape, it's really helpful to actually put your decal <clears throat> back down onto the mat. And the reason for that is I stick it down on the mat like this 
This way it doesn't move around. So when I go to do the transfer tape, it's really easy for me to apply the transfer tape, use my little scraper to get it on there and pull it off without it moving out and about and all around. So I find this a really great hack and it really helps me to just have a steady hand when I'm doing my crafting and especially when I'm layering vinyl, but just in general when I'm working with transfer tape. Now, because I am working with an object that is circular, it's a jar, it can roll all over the place, I like to take something to kind of keep it in place. So I just take a kitchen towel and I fold both sides in so that the middle kind of has a little valley going on and I can fit the jar or whatever it is, the mug, the cup, right in there. Then it won't go anywhere and I like to use my weeding tool to just pull off the transfer tape and voila. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just apply my decal. So I go in very slowly because in a way you kind of have one shot with this and if I mess it up I might get air bubbles and stuff like that. So the slower you do it the better. And honestly as much as the scraper tool is great, I just love going in and going with my hand to kind of do the curve of the jar because that's what's really going to get that decal to stick down. Again, the scraper is really great, but I find I get a much better, I guess, result when I go in with my hand and push it down with my fingers. So I go over each letter with my fingers, and then I'm able to pull the transfer tape off. I know it's kind of hard to see right now because of the towel underneath, but I will show you at the end what the finished product does look like. Okay, so we're going to peel off the last decal that says love, and we're wanting to add that on there. So we're going to apply the transfer tape to the jar now, and then just do the exact same thing we did before with a little scraper and my hand to just make sure it's on there really good, and we're able to now pull it off. There we go. How easy was that project? So easy so quick i love it and really budget friendly so i want to go in with some post-it notes and you could write things like coupons for your partner or date ideas on little popsicle sticks i wanted to do something with little sticky notes because they're colorful and i like a lot of colors so i'm actually writing a bunch of really positive affirmations and things that i would really love to read if i'm feeling down i can take one out and read it or my partner can and it will just make us feel really good so that's what i'm going with but you could do date ideas, so like a movie night with some snacks. I always love that. That's my kind of date night. Date night at home with lots of snacks. Now the idea that I had that I didn't show in this video but I wanted to mention is with this jar, I feel like it would be really beautiful to either add some cardstock rolled paper flowers that you can make with your Cricut very easily. I do actually have a tutorial on my channel on how to make those rolled paper flowers with your Cricut machine. I will link that right up here if you do want to watch that. If not, I will link it down below as well so that you can watch it at the end of this video. Or adding some little paper stars would be really cute. I've seen those as well. But for this one, I'm adding some really colorful sticky notes. My daughter wanted to include some little drawings as well, which will always brighten my day, so I included those in. So I'm just putting them all in, and I just think it looks so cute. Now you could go in with some really pretty cardstock and make these, but I wanted to make it as budget friendly and use what I had in my home. So post-it notes it was, and look how cute this turned out. Oh, this is one of my favorite projects I've done by far. For this one, I wanted to find something I could make with this. And then Valentine's Day, I feel like, is the perfect time to use this. So what it is, is when you buy bedding, or this is actually for my daughter's crib sheet, they come in these little kind of bags. This is bamboo, so it was really nice and soft. But on the flip side, there's nothing on it. And I feel like this would be a great little bag to put stuff in. So I wanted to make one of those little tic-tac-toe pouch things, but with a little bit of a spin on it. So we'll see how that goes. First, we need to download a little tic-tac-toe board kind of background thing, the cross, whatever you want to call it. You could make this yourself with a couple of lines, but I just thought it'd be easier to download it. So I'm going to Google tic-tac-toe PNG and just save whichever one I like. Then we can hop on over to Cricut Design Space. We're going to press upload and then upload image. Now we can press browse. 
And then you're going to select that little tic-tac-toe board thing, whatever you want to call it, that we just downloaded. Perfect. So that is on there. Okay. So now we're going to press simple again and continue. And then this, remember, we're doing the same thing as the butterfly. We're removing the parts that are not in the lines. Make sure to press preview cut image first to make sure it's all good. And you can use the undo button if you need to. Apply and continue. And then select cut image and upload. I did go in and change the name, which I don't normally do, but for this tutorial, I wanted to show you that you could also change the image name. Now select that image. Now you can select the image you just uploaded and press add to canvas. Perfect. So I'm going to size this and set the color that I'm wanting. And then I'm going to start typing out a little saying to go underneath. So instead of tic-tac-toe, it's going to be tic-tac-treat. And that's because I'm going to be adding some little Valentine's Day candies in there and use those as the markers for the tic-tac-toe game. I do love to put a little bit of a template in the background. I'm not going to actually be cutting this black square out, but it is more for reference so that I can do it the size of my little black pouch thing, bedding thing that I'm going to be adding my decal to. And then I know how big I want to make my decal compared to that. So I'm just sizing that. And before I go into cut, I am going to remove that black square template and just make sure that that's not sitting there and cutting out as well. Okay, perfect. So now we're good. We are ready to make it. So we're going to just go up to the top right and press make it. Now I want you to remember because we are working with heat transfer vinyl, really important to make sure you are selecting mirror image. So we're turning the mirror function on and you do that on your Cricut Design Space right here. So mirror is on, that's good. And this is because we are going to be doing heat transfer and that's the way that it goes. It's going to be the opposite. It looks a little funky at first, but when you go to apply it and actually adhere it to the fabric, it's going to be the right side. So don't worry about it if it looks a little funky to you. It's supposed to do that with heat transfer vinyl. Make sure you also have your material set to iron on. Okay, wonderful. So then we're going to load up the second color and cut that out. I did cut these ones off camera because it was pretty late at night at this point. So I didn't pull out the camera there, but I have shown you many times before me cutting out vinyl. Make sure you change your settings to iron on and then make sure that you're pressing the mirror button on any and all mats because here I have two. So make sure you don't forget to do it for the second one as well. So now that it's cut out, I am ready to start weeding out the parts that I do not want and get this ready to apply. Now with heat transfer vinyl, we don't use transfer tape or you know any of that. It's actually on a clear backing already, as you can see. And we are just going to flip it over. So the clear backing is at the very top now. And that is how we're going to do the heat transfer. We are going to use the heat press and just press it like this. So I'm going to finish weeding and make sure those are both good to go. Okay, so I always go in and just apply a little bit of heat to my project first, one to flatten it and two just to get it ready for when I go in with my actual vinyl. Now we're ready to set. So because we don't have to worry about it just sticking down there, we can move it about. I'm just kind of laying it down, seeing where I like. And if you don't like it with heat transfer vinyl, you can just pick it up and move it, which is great because it's not transfer tape. So you can really move it around. It's not sticky to the point where you can't pick it up. I do have a Teflon sheet now. I know, fancy instead of my normal wax paper baking sheet that I use, but whatever you have works great. I used to use a pillowcase or just a really thin fabric over top. And a couple reasons for that. One, to protect your actual project, so your material and your fabric that you're working with. And two, so that you don't melt the plastic transfer transparent backing. That happens a lot and then it gets stuck to your heat press and it is not fun. Try pulling that off when it's burning hot. So definitely make sure you're putting something between 
your heat press and your decal. So here I'm using a little Teflon sheet that I got. Otherwise, even put some wax baking paper, parchment paper. That's what I've used for many years until I got this little Teflon sheet yesterday. I didn't even know it came with the vinyl that I ordered off of Amazon and I was pretty impressed when I actually got it. It works really great, so I will be definitely using that with all my projects now. So for me, it is really good in there and how I know is just rubbing my fingers across one. I don't even feel the decal. It's pretty much into the fibers of the fabric, which is what I want. And you kind of have to find a good balance between not melting your decal to your project because then it gets kind of wrinkly and looks a little funny, but also making sure it is fully adhered on there and hot enough or heated enough with enough pressure, but not too much pressure. And I know that sounds really confusing and like, what am I talking about? You'll kind of get a feel for it depending on the type of fabric and material and it might take a little bit of time so I've definitely melted a couple of different things. Okay so this is the finished project. I just added a couple of little treats in there and this is for the tic-tac-toe game. How cute is this? My husband will really think this one's great because he loves to snack so definitely a great one for us and it could be like whoever wins gets to finish the treats. <laughs> I would win that round that's for sure. It is time for our last project and I wanted to make a mug, but I didn't want it to be some, I would say cheesy, but it is still cheesy. I didn't want it to be super Valentine's Day themed. So I went to lovesvg.com. It is a free SVG downloads website you can use. And I just searched up coffee. Now, there were a couple of really cute ones. Like one of them said, my husband is hotter than my coffee or something like that. And I was looking for something that could work for Valentine's Day, but also work for year round. So this one's cute. And the one that I said, uh, coffee is a hug and a mug. I mean, is it not? I'm also going to be adding some little heart shapes to it. So I'm going to download that. So we are going to upload an image. Again, we're going to hit upload and then upload image and browse. I have talked about this many times in this tutorial, so I'm going to do it you know a little quicker today or for this part of it just so that it's not too repetitive but now you're really going to know how to upload an image to design space so with this one I'm not actually going to be changing anything I like how this looks so I'm going to just be sizing it and that's how I'm going to cut it but I did want to add a heart shape so I'm going to go into Google and I'm just googling heart shape <laughs> pretty straightforward nothing too crazy you can use the shapes on Cricut Design Space, and it's just on the left-hand side here. And I was going to do that, but I just did not like how that heart came out. So Google is my best friend when it comes to this. Now we're going to, again, go to Upload, and then hit Upload Image. We're going to hit Browse, and we're going to select that one. So now we're going to hit Simple again, and Continue. And same thing as we did before, we're going to remove any parts that are not the lines. So anything in between the lines, it's going. Make sure you press on that. Remember, you can use the undo button. And then always remember to press preview cut image first. Because if you don't and you mess up, you're going to have to go back in and redo it. Which, you know, is just an extra step you don't want to have to do. So hit cut image and upload. Now we're going to select that image we just uploaded and press add to canvas. Perfect. So I'm going to go in and size that and I just like to change the color right away. So I'm just going to change it to white. I am going to duplicate it a couple of times and just to make it so it's not all the same, I'm going to flip one of these horizontally so you get a little bit of a different look. Now we are ready to cut it out. So I'm just going to weld together the coffee is a hug and a mug saying my little black decal there to make sure that it all cuts together. So make sure you either attach or weld that. Otherwise your Cricut machine is going to cut it out with random letters all over the place. So it won't even say it in order. It won't say coffee. It'll say like if hug. Okay. I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> But it, it will not say the word and be a full decal. You'll have to kind of construct it yourself after, which is just not something easy. Okay, 
So we're ready to go in and make it. We're going to apply the vinyl to our mat. Make sure you have your settings good to go. Perfect. So I did want to show you this. Again, I always like sharing my mistakes because that's how we learn. So here you can see I did change my settings to just vinyl, but it cut it out a little too much to the point where it started ripping off some parts and the dots on the eyes are missing and things like that. And that's just because the pressure that I set it to with my settings just was too much for this specific vinyl I was using. So if I were to use this specific vinyl again, I would do it on a lighter setting. Now, is there a way to know ahead of time this is going to happen? Not necessarily, but I did just want to show you that this is kind of what happens normally if you don't change your settings or, you know, if you go with different vinyl than you're used to, like me, for example, and it's not a huge deal. You can still use the decal. I'm still going to use it. You'll see I actually just decided to not add one of the dots on the eyes because I just couldn't be bothered and didn't really care enough. But if you do end up messing it up, you can either recut the whole decal if you want and just change the settings a little bit more, or you can go in and just cut the top, the dot of the eye, which I know sounds really weird, but I've done that many times. Trust me, it happens a lot to me. I don't know why. So I'm going to go in and weed it. And like I said, it's really helpful to stick it, especially with a design like this, stick it onto the green or whatever color of Cricut mat you have. And then this way, when you're weeding it, the little paper behind it isn't coming up and just making it even harder. It's stuck down on there, so it's not going anywhere and you're able to weed it. Now I'm cutting my transfer tape to the size of my decal and I'm applying it with my scraper to get it on there. Wonderful, so I just like doing the transfer tape all together. And then I'm doing my little towel hack to keep it down okay so now we're ready uh, the towel is kind of getting in the way and the mug has a handle so I'm just using the handle now for something like this I find it best when it's something like a mug to put my finger across the middle first so I'm sticking down the very middle of the decal first and then I go in with scissors and along the sides of the transfer tape, I make small little cuts. And this is so that I can kind of fold the transfer tape without getting those air bubbles. And then I can really properly get the full decal adhered to the mug or whatever project I'm working with. Okay, so again, it's so helpful to just go in with your fingers instead of the scraper because your fingers are able to move and get that rounded kind of Thing that you need to really push it down whereas the scraper can't quite do all of the angles that your fingers can okay that sounds weird i don't know so now we're ready to pull it up so i'm just going to pull the transfer tape off and then i'm going to go in and add these little heart shapes the exact same way with my fingers i just find it a lot easier and voila there we go it's so cute i really love it now you don't need to seal this mug you can if you want, but it's permanent vinyl, so you don't need to worry about it really. But it is not dishwasher safe at this point. It is not microwave safe. So if you are gifting it to someone, make sure you tell them that. I normally add little care labels that I make with my Cricut draw function and my pen, and then I include it with the cup, and then I add like some little treats and stuff. Alrighty crafters, so now you have four more really easy DIY Valentine's Day gift ideas to be making with your Cricut machine. Get crafty and I just hope this sparks some creativity in you to get crafting. Thank you so much for watching. I have a lot of other DIY crafting and Cricut content on my channel so feel free to check out any of my playlists or any of my other videos. I really appreciate you and your time and I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.